I'm sorry our fishing trip turned out this way, hey boy. But we can't go back to San Francisco until we know this girl is safe. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Mr. Paladin? Hey, boy. You, sir. Well, what in the devil is all that you're carrying? Oh, uh, it's camping equipment. Uh, I come in, please. Well, yes, come on in. Yeah, oh, thank you. Gee. Oh, yeah, hey, boy, tired. <laughs> I don't doubt it, but why in the world do you have all that equipment? Oh, it's very necessary for a fishy trip, Mr. Paladin. Well, we certainly don't need all that. Oh, yes, sir. Man in store, I tell hey boy he need many things. Oh, the man of the store. Huh? Mm. Well, did you tell him that we were only going for one week? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, that uh, hey boy get time off from job that you promised to take me, and that it's very happy time. But may I remind you that besides two saddle horses, we're only taking one pack horse. Oh, too much equipment, huh? Oh, much too much. You a hey boy have to leave some? You'll have to leave a lot. All we need are a couple of saddle blankets, cooking gear, some fishing line, and a few hooks. Oh. And the rest is up to the fish when they see the worms. Worms? Yeah. Little wiggly worms? That's right. We use them for bait. Yeah. Yeah, boy, not like little wiggly worm. <laughs> well, there's one other way to catch fish, hey, boy. Oh, yes, sir? How? Well, you find yourself a nice rock out in the middle of the stream, see? Mm hmm? And you crouch on it like a cat. And be still. Shh. Very still. Oh, yes, sir. Ah, uh, then what? Then, after a couple of hours, you might see a fish. Oh. And when you do, you take a deep breath, dive into that icy stream, and swim after him. Huh? If you're lucky and can hold your breath long enough, you may catch a fish. Hmm. Mr. Paladin? Yes? Hey, boy, use little wiggly worm. <laughs> That's a warning signal for all drivers. And that can be a warning signal for drowsy drivers on long, monotonous trips. You see, driving can make you drowsy no matter how much sleep you get. And driving and dozing just don't mix. Why take chances? Take no-dose, stay-awake tablets. Millions of times a year, safe no-dose keeps drivers awake and alert. Helps you bounce back so that you feel sharp, ready for any emergency. How does no-dose do it? Ask your doctor. He'll tell you that no-dose contains a safe and accurate amount of caffeine, the same refreshing stimulant you get in your coffee or tea. But safe no-dose acts faster, is handier and more reliable. Best of all, it is not habit-forming. And no-dose is so safe, it is legally sold on a national basis without a prescription. Get no-dose, stay-awake tablets to help you stay awake and alert. It could save your life. Hey, boy and I left San Francisco and traveled south into the Santa Lucia Mountains. The wild beauty of this part of California was magnificent to see. The great jagged cliffs rising toward the sky and then suddenly slashing off and dropping into the crashing surf of the Pacific far below. The heavy, untamed forest growing to the very brink of the cliffs. We turned inland and rode deep into the Santa Lucias, searching for the mountain streams that would afford the best fishing. And soon we had a comfortable camp set up. The next morning, Hey Boy was up with the sun and standing on the bank of the stream, fishing. By 10 o'clock, he still hadn't had a strike. Uh, 
Hey, boy. Hey, boy, don't you want to eat some breakfast? Shh. What? Hey, boy, catchy fish. Well, now, look here. We'll be here a whole week, and so will the fish. Hey, boy, you was wiggly worm, just like you say, boy. Still, you no catchy fish. Well, you know what I think. I think you've frightened the fish away, standing there staring at that stream the way you are. No, hey, boy, wait a long time to go on fishy trip with you. Now I catch a fishy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What was that? Oh, sound like a lady scream, Mr. Paladin. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Paladin! You there! Leave that girl alone. You hear me? I said leave her alone. <laughs> you. You hit Carlos. Kill. I will kill. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Ringo. Dirty gringo. Hey, Mr. He have knife. You will die, gringo, with a knife. Don't you try it. <laughs> All right. Why do you harm this girl? I, I must kill her. You must let me kill her. I said, why do you harm this girl? Go. I go now. You will turn Carlos loose. No, you come back here. Come back! Please, let him go. Don't go after him. Are you all right? Yes. Yes, I think so. Who are you? Marlene, Marlene Carter. What's this all about? What happened? Well, I was rounding up stray cattle when yeah. Carlos came up and yeah. tried to kill me. You know this boy? Yes. Why would he try to kill you? I don't know. He's, he's like a wild, crazy animal. How far do you live from here? About a mile. Hey, boy. Get our things together. We better see that she gets home all right. Yes, sir. Thank you, mister. Again this fall, we citizens of the United States have the chance to demonstrate to the rest of the world the vigor of our free institutions. But if past history be a guide, an appallingly large percentage of Americans will not vote in the presidential election. In the present critical world situation, and with economic problems at home, men of the highest skill and capacity are needed. The caliber of the officials we elect depends on the thoughtful choice of the people. Participate in this fall's elections. Contribute to your party or candidate. Work for your choices. Make sure you're registered. Then be sure to take your turn at the voting booth in November. During the months ahead, right through the excitement of election night, CBS News will report all campaign developments fairly, impartially, completely to help you make your decision intelligently, to make you a fully informed voter this November. Marlene Carter's ranch was hidden in a small valley, and the heavily wooded forest came almost to the back of the house, its tangled undergrowth capable of hiding many things, its darkness lonely and sinister. We were met in the front yard by an ageless Mexican woman who was introduced as Toleta. Briefly, Marlene explained what had happened, and Toleta looked at me, her black eyes strange and piercing. Marlene insisted we stay for coffee, and after the first cup, Hey, boy went outside to water the horses. By this time, the girl had recovered sufficiently to talk freely. Toledo and I run this ranch by ourselves, Mr. Paladin. Just the two of you? That's right. My mother died when I was born, and my father died just last year. Toledo's all I have left. She's been like a mother to me all my life. But don't you have someone here to help you? Ranch hands? Or... No. This place is a long way from any town, Mr. Paladin. Oh. And the men you can get aren't the most desirable. I hired a couple of men once. As soon as they found out Toledo and I lived here alone, they began to get ideas. Toledo had to run them off with a shotgun. Yeah, I see. Besides, I only run a small herd, and I can handle cattle about as good as any man. Well, I'm sure you can, but it seems that handling cattle isn't your only problem. What about Carlos? Oh, it's a terrible, terrible thing. Who is he? Mr. Paladin, 
Carlos Martinez was raised right here, right on this ranch. Oh? My father always treated him like, well, like he was my brother. We grew up together. Carlos was always kind and good until about two years ago. What happened? Well, there was an accident. Accident? He was breaking a horse. The horse threw him. Carlos fractured his skull. We thought he was going to die, but he didn't. Maybe, oh, it's a horrible thing to say, but maybe it would have been better if he had. Why would you say that? When he got well, he he wasn't the same. How do you mean? Well, he just, sometimes he, he'd get kind of wild. It, it was frightening. My father couldn't control and nobody could. Then one day he just disappeared. That was over a year ago. And you hadn't seen him again until today? Only once when we buried Dad. We saw him lurking in the woods. Toledo tried to go out and talk to him, but he looked at her kind of wild and ran off. Oh, Toledo, uh, did Mr. Paladin's friend find his way around? I see. He's still watering the horses. More coffee, senor? Uh, yes, thank you, Toledo. Uh, I, I still don't understand why he'd want to kill you, Marlene. You say Carlos was raised on this ranch. He almost got killed by a horse which seemed to hurt his mind and turn him into some kind of an animal. He is not an animal. He is a man with feelings and gentleness and hurts, just like you and just like me. I raised him just as I raised Senorita Marlene. I rubbed him to sleep when he was a child, and I cried over him when he was sick. Please, Toledo, I didn't tell him. There is nothing to hide. Senor Paladin should know that Carlos Martinez is my son. I sat and looked at Toledo. In her eyes, I could see the pain and torture, the heartache of a mother who has had to stand helplessly by and watch a thing she loves, a part of herself, her own son, turn into a savage. Without another word, she turned and silently left the room. I'm sorry, Mr. Paladin. I should have told you Carlos was Toledo's son. Well, I should have guessed. Ah. This must hurt her very deeply. More than anyone knows. Sometimes at night I hear her rocking in the chair on the porch, singing a little Spanish lullaby, the one she used to sing to Carlos and me a long time ago. Well, can't something be done? I mean, couldn't he be put somewhere and given treatment? Where? There's nothing around here, even if he could be caught. Well, what about the doctors? What do they say? All the same thing. Nothing can be done for him. Well, still, it seems that... Mr. Paladin! Mr. Paladin? What is it, hey, boy? What's wrong? A big man, sir. Uh, one who tried to kill a young lady. He outside. You're... What? Yes, sir. I see him in woods back of the house. He see hey, boy. He run. Are you sure? Oh, yes, sir. Very sure. He's come back, Mr. Paladin. What'll I do? I don't know. But I do know you and Toledo can't stay here alone. Do you have an extra room? Yes, I do. All right, then. For your protection, Marlene, Hey Boy and I are going to stay here tonight. And now, here are Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Bergen, when I'm old enough to drive, can I have a car? Not unless you learn to care for it properly, Charlie. Oh, I'm a genius with a monkey wrench. The kids in our block say, if Charlie can't fix your car, there, there's something wrong with it. Yeah. Now, suppose you have a car. Yeah, let's make it a Corvette, a conservative red with yellow stripes. The color is not important. But if it's any GM car or truck, you should take it to your General Motors dealer for service. Oh, sure, I know. Oh, and what do you ask for? Have uh, a credit? No. Guardian maintenance. Do you know what guardian maintenance means? It's the story of my life. Like you are my guardian and I, I maintain you. No, Charlie. Guardian maintenance is expert service performed by GM trained servicemen who have the proper tools and the factory approved parts to do the job right. And it's available to owners of Chevrolet cars and trucks, Pontiacs, Oldsmobiles, Buicks, Cadillacs, and GMC trucks. And red Corvettes with yellow stripes. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Paladin, uh, you want a cup of coffee, too? Uh, no, 
No, thank you, boy. Well, hey, boy, not like fishy trip. Want to go back to San Francisco? Yeah. I'm sorry it turned out this way, hey, boy, but we we can't go back just now. No, somebody have unhappy doggy? No, that's a coyote, hey, boy. There's hmm? a full moon tonight. So you'll hear a lot of them. No, not a good sound. Make hey, boy, spine tickle. Yeah. I think I'll go take a look around outside before turning in. I'll be back in a few minutes. Yes, sir. Oh, you be careful, Mr. Paladin. Big crazy man may be waiting outside to kill you. Remember, he have knife. I'll remember. Mr. Paladin. Huh? Oh, Marlene? I thought you were in bed. I was, but I heard till later. Till later? She's on the porch again, rocking and singing. Come here by the window. She knows Carlos is around. I think she wants him to hear her. She shouldn't be out there alone. I know. I'm going out. I'll go with you. The moon is bright tonight, Toledo. See, si. you should be in bed, little one. And Toledo, you mind if I look around a little? I think it might be a good idea. I cannot control your actions, Senor Paladin. Uh, perhaps it'd be better if you and Marlene went back into the house. No. We will wait on the porch for you, Senor Paladin. Then we will all go back in the house. All right. As you wish. Mr. Paladin, are you hurt? A knife in my back. Oh. Get away. And get back to the house. No, no, I can't no. leave you. I told you. I told you I would be back. Carlos! The knife. It is good. No. Carlos, don't. I will kill him, then I will kill you. Carlos, don't. Please, Carlos. Carlos, your mother calls you. I. I have no mother. Did you not hear me sing the lullaby? Was that not the song your mother used to sing to you? See, si. see si, that is so. But you were singing to this one. You were not singing to me. Always you sing to her, and she has taken you from me. She has taken you from me. So I have no mother. Listen to me, Carlos. No, no. I will kill them. I will kill them both. No, I... Carlos. I have Mr. Paladin's gun. So you stand back. You just stand back. No. No, I must kill. No, Carlos, don't! Don't! Oh! Oh, my son. Carlos. Carlos. She shot me. She killed me. Oh, Carlos. I'm sorry, Carlos. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. She took you. She took my mother no. from me. No, Carlos. Never did that happen. Never. Was... Was it so? Were you truly singing for me? It is true. Only for you. <laughs> Carlos. Oh, my son. Oh, Toledo. I'm sorry. It is all right, my child. You will be happy now. Come in. Ah, Miss Wong. Ah, Mr. Wong, you feel better now, Mr. 
pile it on the bad wound all he loves. Oh, yes, I feel fine, thank you. Oh, Doctor says I'll be up by tomorrow. Oh, you very sick when Hayboy bring you back from trip. By the way, where is Hayboy? I haven't seen him for two days. Oh, he go all over. Try to sell camping, fishing things he bought to go on trip. Oh, I see. You mean he doesn't like fishing after all, No, huh? sir. Hey, boy, say he never leaves San Francisco again. He say too many things happen. Well, this fishing trip was a little unusual. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, boy, also say it's too easy to catch fish. Too easy? Too easy. <laughs> hey, boy, said that? Yes, sir. He say he catch big fish first time he put line in water. Big fish? Big fish. How big? Oh, about this big. That big? That big. Miss Wong, do you know what? Yes, sir. Hey, boy, tell me, see, Wong, big fishy story. <laughs> you are so very oh, right. I remember something you said to me a long time ago. Oh, what was that? Yes, sir. You say, use discretion. Uh-huh. Oh. So when hey, boy, talk about fish, me, see, Wong, let eyes get very large. You listen with mouth open. Ah, I see. Oh, hey, boy, you have such good audience. He take me, see, Wong, for a walk in the moonlight. Oh, so pretty soon. He forget about fish. <laughs> Miss Wong, hey, boy, may not know it, but he's the fish that swallowed the hook. Pepsi-Cola refreshes without filling. Why? Because it's truly light. Charlie, you're forgetting something. Wait, Kay, there's more. Yes, ice-cold Pepsi is the delicious refreshment that goes great at a picnic or a party. But, Charlie... And Pepsi goes fast. People like it, so keep plenty handy. There. Oh, you did fine, except for one thing. Well, I mentioned lightness and how Pepsi refreshes and how fast it goes. You left out Pepsi sociability. You know the Be Sociable song. But, Kay, I can't sing. I can. Listen. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. Well, at least I can say this. Pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Please do. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Ann Whitfield, Vic Perrin, and Lillian Bayef. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel.